So at home in Nicholson, the winter of 19 and 20 has been relatively mild, and it's almost over. And while filming for year two with the Yodel, I wanted to take the time to address a topic of contention with the first year. So when I first made the video about my wood stove, I never in a million years expected the kind of attention that it received. As it stands right now, it's almost up to a quarter million views. And by far, the number one topic in the comment section is about this wood stove glass and the condition it was at the end of the burning year. So for those of you wondering how I started this year, I did replace the glass. And if you look close, it's probably not detectable from this angle or that far away. There's already a spot of that permanent fog that's came back and it will not clean off because, and this is a very important distinction, it will not clean off because it's not dirty, it's damaged. The first thing about what we call wood stove glass that most people don't realize is that it's not glass. There is no glass that could withhold these kind of temperatures and not shatter the first time it was touched or just simply melt at these very high temperatures that these stoves get to. What this is, is a type of pyroceramic it's obviously a clear ceramic, and it's extraordinarily durable. I've had logs roll forward when I was upstairs in bed. I heard the impact, and there's never been any kind of damage from the impact, ever. So what did happen? Of course, the first thing I did try was the old ash trick. If you put a little ash and, and water together, it makes a lye water. Lye is a chemical that's made from hardwood ashes and water, that is the number one ingredient in soap along with fat. So the lye water is an extremely potent cleaner and it does work very well for cleaning any type of blackening that's gonna come up on this window. So of course that was the first thing that I tried. Now this being ceramic and not glass, again that's very important, I also tried CLR and this standard wood stove glass cleaner. So what happened to my glass to put it in the kind of condition that it was in at the end of the burning year last year? The answer is simple, sometimes I cheat. And this, being left open, creates a different airflow. When you're just using the air control lever, the airflow inside of the firebox is a circular motion that continuously sweeps in front of the, the glass to keep it clean. This is called the air wash system. Now, when you open something else, cause air to flow from a different thing, especially the ash pan itself, you get a rocket stove effect. And this will get the ash and the hot coals at the bottom of the firebox and have a volcano effect where it's going in all directions at a very, very rapid speed. So if you're gonna do that, which really you probably shouldn't, and I definitely shouldn't, what you need to do is just get the fire started and close it. And don't make the mistake that I did and leave it open and go upstairs, meaning to come back down and then you forget. And when you come back down, the stove has been very hot for a very long time and I immediately noticed the new spot on the glass. That got me doing a lot of reading and a lot of research. So what happens is, when the airflow is doing the volcano effect and not being routed the way it's designed to in the firebox, this ceramic will actually on the very inside start to soften. And it softens just enough that the ash blowing around sticks to it. And when it cools, it reforges a ceramic with ash mixed into it. No matter how much you scrub it and no matter what cleaner you use, you will not get that off there because the glass is damaged. And in all essence, it's been reforged. The ash leaves a permanent spot that's, that will look like it's going to wipe off with just water. And then as soon as the water dries, it comes right back. Another important note is that some people will tell you that this is etching. And etching is something that happens on propane stoves with glass windows. In the propane that's routed into the stove, there's a chemical that makes the propane smell, that very distinct smell, so it can be detected if it's leaking. And that chemical is called mercaptan. The mercaptan in the propane or the natural gas is what causes propane stoves to get their glass etched. So in this firebox there's no mercaptan. A wood stove cannot have etched glass for that specific reason, the absence of the chemical. And I figured out a way to repair it. So that's what I'm going to do and we're going to see how it turns out. So my friend Dylan has a side-by-side -side with a plastic windshield on it and going through the trails hitting sticks and all kinds of shrubbery that plastic windshield gets a lot of damage so he keeps a buffer around for that specific reason to keep it clear and repair the damage. So as I sit here with this glass it's not too difficult to see what the exact problem is. You can tell some places where it's genuinely dirty and can be cleaned. 
And this is the permanent cloud that simply cannot. It's smooth and there's nothing on the surface at all. But as you can see, it's not too great. So I set up a place to film. Got some good lighting, so hopefully we can see all the details. This is just the cement floor of my basement. And underneath this indoor-outdoor, I'll probably put a nice thick foam yoga mat. So I can give a little push, you don't have to worry about damaging the glass further. So here's what we're gonna be using. We've got two different types of buffing compound. One to get the, uh, the ceramic down, past the damage, and the other to polish it. And thanks to my friend Dylan, he let me use his buffer and his compound, so. The first thing I wanna do is clean it up just a little bit and get as much of that crud off there as I can before I start working on it, so let's get started. Just with a glass cleaner, it got the heavier stuff off. We still have the damage. Now we're gonna try to take care of that. All right, so some time has passed and I let the project cool down because it was very hot. And you could already see a very drastic difference now. There's one spot left that needs attention and that's right through there. And this side is almost already crystal clear. So, it's time to get back to work. See if we can't get this like new. All right, so I abandoned the do it on the floor idea. That was, I just cleared off a space on my bench here and, that way I can tuck it into a corner, have the box up a little bit on the side to protect the buffing wheel. And it's time to start again. And this time, hopefully, it's going to be much easier now that I'm up off the ground. Um, probably should have done that right from the start, but... I kind of expected it not to be this much work. But I think, like I said, if you had a buffing compound that was a little more rigid, it would have got through that a lot faster. But we're making lots of progress, and it's definitely no time to stop. As I run my finger across, you can feel it's perfectly smooth right there. And you get right to here, and it's not. You can feel that that. You can even hear me. Oh, why did I think of this right from the start? Oh man, that was dumb.
All right, so it's not done yet. It's not perfect, so it's not done. But this is pretty close. It's hard to even tell you're looking through the glass that came out so nice. There's still just a little bit of defect on this glass. But it has virtually all buffed out. I am uh, very impressed and very happy. I'm going to work on this a little bit more. So it's virtually impossible to detect on camera, but it is there. You can see it. See the blur right there a little bit. There still is a little bit of ash in this glass in this one spot. Probably really wouldn't be that noticeable uh, if I was to just reinstall this glass right now, but I'm going to try to get it perfect. So I'm going to work at it a little harder. I really wish I had a more coarse buffing compound, but I don't. So I have to work with what I got. And the buffer is really good. So it's going to try to work this last bit out. And I have to say the rest of the glass is flawless. That's a nice chunk off that's looking better. I'm gonna let that cool down. So that is a very big difference. There's only one small area where there's any defects left and you can see it right there. And it's stubborn. But I'm gonna try again to get it. There's not much of it left. <clears throat> but you could already see from the work that's gone into this that there isn't a cleaner a cleaning method in the world. No bottle cleaner, not CLR, and not ashes dipped in water that would have just simply wiped this off. Uh, this is damage that this will fix. The spot left is the size of my finger and it's hardly detectable. I am very, very impressed and very happy. The glass is utterly flawless. All the ash that was embedded in it is completely gone. Eroded away. It is crystal clear, like brand new again. And now, at the end of this year, I can take this out, repair that little spot, I'll put this one back in. It is hard to get a grasp on how clear it is. Show you my spice rack. But if you look at that when it started compared to the finished, it's flawless. It's like new again. And then my little girl. Perfectly clear. No matter which way you look at it. So since I got to remove this glass and replace it, taking it off allowed me to bring it to some people much more knowledgeable than myself. Many of them I found at Tall Pines Farm in Montrose, Pennsylvania, and they also put me in contact with some other very knowledgeable people who helped me out greatly. And it was the opinions of all these people combined that led me to this strategy of repair. I hope it can help you out and give you some insight into what happened to my stove. Or if you have stumbled upon this video in another way, I hope it can help you out in repairing your glass. It is one of the downfalls of having such a beautiful view of your fire with this big glass is that it is subject to more damage taking up more surface area. So this is a good tactic to have going forward. Thank you all very much for watching.